This is the OnePlus 5, and this is the brand new OnePlus 5T. And I guess you could say this is the phone that the OnePlus 5 should have been. But what this phone does is it takes what the 5 had to offer, improves upon it, and what we get is what I believe to be the best phone you can get in this price range. So the 5T's design is roughly the same as the 5's. The biggest differences here would be that it's just under 2 millimeters taller, 0.9 millimeters wider, 9 grams heavier, it's got a larger display that takes up the majority of the front, and because of that, OnePlus had to move the front fingerprint reader to the back, right above the OnePlus logo. This also means no more capacitive navigation buttons on the front, it's now full-time software-based buttons. The alert slider is still here, happy to see that, I find it to be an underrated feature, and the headphone jack is still here, very happy to see that, and I know a lot of you guys are too. But let's talk about that display real quick. It's 6 inches, it's AMOLED, you're looking at a flat 80% screen to body ratio, and it's 1080p. Yes, a 6 inch display with 1080p resolution may not sound too hot, but let me tell you, OnePlus did it again. It's a great looking display. It's clean, it's bright, and the colors are nice and punchy. It may not be on the same level as other high-end smartphone displays out there, and if you pixel peep, you can definitely make out the pixelation, but it totally works. There's also no sign of that jelly scrolling that we got on the 5, so thumbs up for that. Yes, the design is very familiar. It's clean, razor thin, and it looks super stealthy with this colorway. I might have gotten one of the other colors it comes in, but this is the only color it comes in. Luckily, D brand's dragon skin that I love so much doesn't just come in black anymore. Keep an eye out for this new red color. Check D brand out in the description below. Another thing that the 5T keeps from its older brother is that 3300 mAh battery. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that I was hoping for a larger one, especially since the display is larger, but so far, battery life hasn't been an issue. When I first got the phone, I was getting a whopping 6 hours of screen on time, but as time went on, it settled down to around 5 hours as I expected. It's great though, battery life is consistent and I don't have to worry about it draining as it just sips the battery while the phone's not in use. Now while the phone is in use, the user experience is excellent. We're still looking at Oxygen OS, which is one of my personal favorites. You've got the usual customization features and all the little tweaks and gestures that you can do are very nicely executed and they are always welcomed. OnePlus even added a parallel apps function where you can clone apps like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for use with multiple accounts. In terms of performance, this phone absolutely flies in pretty much every aspect. Literally everything that I threw at this phone, it handled it no sweat. It's like the phone just looked at me as if to say, ha, what else you got? Performance is right up there with the Pixel 2. Now it may not be as fluid, but it's close. It's one of the snappiest phones out there and thanks to the Snapdragon 835 and all of the RAM that you can get, whether it be 6 or 8, it really makes for a power user's dream. This speed of course applies to the rate at which you can charge this phone thanks to dash charge and the fingerprint reader on the back. I'm definitely a huge fan of this placement, I find it to be the perfect spot, it's natural, and it just works. It's lightning quick, very accurate, it's great. Something else that's lightning quick is the new face unlock feature. Personally, I wasn't expecting OnePlus to implement this, but I am glad they did. This is easily the fastest facial recognition I have ever used. A mere glance at the phone is all it needs, and boom, you're at your home screen. It'll even unlock if you're just looking at the phone before you wake it, which is pretty crazy. Now I know there are some concerns with this, so I'll do my best to clear some of this up. First, there is an option where you can set it to unlock the phone, but stay on the lock screen until you swipe up so that you get a chance to check your notifications. Second, I've tried to unlock the phone with multiple pictures of myself and even video, but I can't get it to work. Not saying that it's completely immune to pictures, but in my testing that hasn't been a concern so far. Third, the phone won't unlock unless your eyes are open, which is nice, but unlike Face ID, you don't have to look at the phone for it to unlock. And fourth, no, it doesn't work in the dark unless the screen brightness lights up your face. So I hope that was able to clear some things up for you. While it may not be the most secure option, it's stupid fast and quite surprisingly reliable. Now let's talk about those cameras because for a lot of people, the cameras are the deciding factor. The main camera as well as the selfie camera are the same as the ones found on the OnePlus 5. It's that secondary lens that's different. But what may surprise you is that it's not a telephoto lens, it's not a wide angle lens, it's not even a monochrome lens, it's just a regular lens. This one's purpose is to get you better results in low light, where the phone will automatically switch over to this camera when it gets dark enough, and it'll look to combine pixels together to reduce noise. To keep things short and sweet, 
The results are just okay, and unfortunately there's not a huge difference being made here. I really like the concept and all, I just don't think it was executed as well as it could have been as there doesn't appear to be any indication as to when it actually switches over, and when it does, it has to be pretty darn dark in order to do so. And it doesn't help that there isn't any OIS here. But as a whole, the camera experience is solid. You can get some nice looking shots, in the right conditions you can get some great looking shots, and it has all the same features that we got on the 5 albeit the portrait mode is now fully software based. And even though there's no OIS, EIS does a great job stabilizing video footage and I was pleased with the smooth results I was getting. Of course, no phone is without its downsides. And trust me, I could go on and on about how other phones have what this one doesn't. But what I feel to be the 5T's best feature is something that every other high-end flagship phone does not have, and that's its price tag. While OnePlus phones are increasing in price, you have to remember, so are everybody else's phones. And for the price, in my opinion, this is the best phone you can get. It packs a very, very solid punch with speed and powerful performance that puts it in my personal top 5 Android phones of the year list. It's that good. So what do you guys think of the OnePlus 5T? Let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. As always, we love to hear your feedback. But that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. Subscribe to the Android Police channel if you haven't already. That does it for me. I'll talk to you guys later. And thank you so much for watching.